Hello, in this video I'll be talking about moles and how moles relates to volume. Volume, as a reminder, is the three-dimensional space that something takes up. Avogadro had this idea that if you had the same number of particles at the same temperature and the same pressure, that they would occupy the same amount of space. It turned out through later research that he was correct, and that's where we eventually stumbled on the idea of the mole. So moles and volume are really, really closely related. What we found is that if you have a special set of conditions which are called standard temperature and pressure, that one mole of gas, regardless of what kind of gas it is, will always occupy 22.4 liters. All right, and so some of that information is summarized here. We've got standard temperature and pressure, STP is what we use for short on that. Uh, the standard temperature that we use is zero degrees Celsius or the freezing point of water. The standard pressure that we use is one atmosphere of pressure. One atmosphere of pressure is just the normal pressure at sea level. Um, at atmospheric pressure in different places can kind of change, but it's usually pretty close to one atmosphere wherever you are on the Earth. Up in, up in the mountains, it's a little bit lower pressure. Um, underwater, of course, it would be high pressure. Um, but if you're talking about being outside in the open atmosphere, usually it's somewhere around one atmosphere of pressure. So what we're saying here is under these specific conditions and only these specific conditions, a mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters. Typically speaking, all gases that we interact with are somewhere near these conditions, and so 22.4 can serve as a pretty good estimate for the molar volume of gas. Next, I'm going to talk about this little flow chart that we have here. What this flow chart does is it relates the three different uh, conversion factors that we've sort of discussed so far in this unit. The first one is between moles and mass. If you're going to convert between mass, which is in grams, and moles, you need the molar mass, which you get from the periodic table. If you're going to convert between moles and particles, which we generally refer to as molecules and atoms, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is your conversion factor. If you're converting between moles and volume, which is the, the new conversion factor that we just introduced, we know that one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure occupies 22.4 liters in volume. Generally speaking, on all of these problems, we're going to assume standard temperature and pressure. If I don't say standard temperature and pressure, go ahead and assume it's the case. Um, only if I say that we have some other conditions will you really think that something different is happening here. So I'm going to go through a couple examples of how this is used, and then we're going to do a couple examples where we mix all of these different conversion factors together. But first, let's just start with the new volume conversion factor. On this problem, you're given moles, and you're asked to calculate the volume or the liters that something takes up. So we always start with the number that's given in the problem. It's 0 0.435 moles of HE, that's helium gas. We just learned that one mole of any gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. If you go through then, uh, we have to count for sig fig, so 0.435 is 3, 22.4 is 3, and that one mole of helium on the bottom, that's that perfect one, that infinitely many sort of one. The 22.4 is where the rounding comes in that conversion factor. So three sig figs is what we have here on our answer. You simply multiply 0.435 times 22.4 and you get 9.74 liters of HE. All right, so that was converting from moles to liters. Now we're going to go the other way. We're given 34.2 liters of oxygen gas. So that's 34.2 liters of O2. It's important here that you realize that oxygen gas is O2 because it's one of those diatomic elements. And so when it's in its natural state, it's going to have two oxygen atoms, not just one. So 34.2 liters of O2. We want liters of O2 to cancel out, so we put liters of O2 on the bottom. Uh, we we're going to get into moles of O2. All right, and then that 22.4 number comes in again, but this time it's on the bottom because it always goes with liters, 22.4 liters in one mole. 
So this time uh, we've got three sig figs with 34.2 and we've got three sig figs with 22.4. 34.2 divided by 22.4 equals 1.53 moles of O2. All right, now for a more complicated problem. And I'm going to go through the flow chart on this one. So it says, how many liters do 45.04 grams of chlorine gas occupy? So we're going from grams in this problem to liters. So when we think about our flow chart here, we're going from mass to volume. Now you can see that mass and volume are not directly related. In order to get from mass to volume, we have to go from mass to moles and then we have to go to volume. All right, so this is a two-step conversion. We use the molar mass to convert from mass to moles, and then we use 22.4 to convert from moles to volume. So in these longer problems, we kind of need to consider process before we get started because, uh, as I said, they're a little bit more complicated. So looking back at this, we always start with the number that's given, 45.04 grams, and in this case it's Cl2 because chlorine gas again is another diatomic gas. All right. So we need to go from grams to moles, so I set that up, grams of Cl2 to moles of Cl2. All right. Then from moles we can go to liters, so I cancel out here, I put moles in the bottom, moles of Cl2, to liters of Cl2. Once you have that, uh, general thing set up. We need to find our conversion factors. We need the molar mass of chlorine to do this problem, so I'm going to ca calculate that now. Cl2 is what we're looking for. You have to look up the mass on the periodic table. That's how you get the molar mass. So it's 2 times 35.45, all right, and when you do that, you should get 70.90 for your molar mass. So there are 70.90 grams in one mole. 70.90 grams in one mole. All right, now going from moles to liters, that's the 22.4 is the conversion factor. So we've got 22.4 liters in one mole. Then we go ahead and we multiply across uh, 45.04 times 22.4 and we divide by 70.90. That's four sig figs times three sig figs divided by four sig figs. So three is the smallest amount we have here. If you do that, you should get 14.2 liters of Cl2. Next, number four, it says, how many atoms are there in 43.43 liters of Ne? So this time, we're starting with liters and we're asking how many atoms. So think of that flow chart again. We're starting in liters and it's asking how many particles, which is, or how many atoms, which is particles. So to get there, what we have to do is we have to go from volume to moles, and then we go from moles to particles. The conversion factor from volume to moles is 22.4. The conversion factor from moles to particles is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So going back to our problem here, we start with 43.43 liters of Ne. Then we want to cancel out liters of Ne and get it into moles of Ne. All right. Then we cancel out moles of Ne and we want to get it into atoms of Ne. Now notice neon gas is monoatomic, so it's not Ne2. It's not one of the diatomic gases, so we just write it as Ne. Conversion from liters to moles. There are 22.4 liters in one mole, so 22.4 goes on the bottom, 22.4 liters in one mole. Atom to mole conversion, there's 6.02, 6.02, times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. All right, so we calculate here. It's four sig figs times three sig figs divided by three, so our answer has three again. All right, um, multiply across the top. 
if I divide the 22.4, and what we get here is 1.17 times 10 to the 24th atoms of Ne. Okay, I'm going to do just one more example, and then uh, after that, I'll uh, encourage you to look at the key online that has all of the examples, and if you have any trouble seeing why they work out the way that they worked out, uh, you can come in and ask me. So this next one, it says, um, well, actually, I'm, I'm going to start here with one that's a little bit more complicated than number one on the back. We're going to do problem number two here. Problem number two, it says, what is the mass of 35.4 liters of carbon dioxide? So we're going from liters, which is volume, to mass, all right, which is a two-step conversion. We're going from volume to moles first, and then we're going from moles to mass. All right. So to get that process started, we start with 35. 0.4 liters of carbon dioxide is CO2, so you're still responsible for knowing how to come up with a formula based on the name on these things. All right, then we're going to go from liters of CO2, so liters of CO2 to moles of CO2. Okay, and now we're in moles, and we can cancel moles out and get into grams of CO2, so we want to go from moles of CO2 to grams of CO2, which is the mass. All right. Liters to moles, that's that 22.4 liters in one mole conversion factor. All right, going from grams to moles, we have to use the periodic table and find the molar mass. So carbon, oops, CO2, let's do it this way. CO2, carbon has 12.01, there's only one carbon, plus two times the mass of oxygen, since there are two oxygens, that's 16.00 grams. You add those together, and what you end up with is 44.01 grams for the molar mass. So we know that's 44.01 grams in one mole for carbon dioxide. Uh, and again, you looked at the periodic table to get that 44.01. You can't do this process without the periodic table. So what we're going to do here, it's 35.4 times 44.01 divided by 22.4. Again, we end up with three significant figures here because it's three sig figs times four sig figs divided by three sig figs. You perform this calculation, and you should get 69.6, and the units on that are grams of CO2. Okay, as I said, uh, you are kind of free to do the rest of these on your own. Uh, make sure, you, though, that you check the key and see if you're getting them right. And if you're not, make sure you stop in and ask what's going on.